Hello, Herman here with a new video in the ClearPass workshop series where we build a ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with Wired, Wireless, Active Directory and much more. In our previous video, we were able to do our authentication with EPTEEP. So .1x authentication on the Wired. We didn't do anything else, so just authentication and we allowed access. In this video, we will implement role-based access with local user roles on our OS CX at this point. Before we do, I have a few things that I want to change because I missed two things and I'd like to add another one. First of all, you may remember this configuration. So we did the radius authentication and we did enable the radius dynamic authorization. Uh, however, I did not add the client in there. So if you enable dynamic authorization on the CX switches, you also need to configure the client. So you need to create a radius shared secret for that system and we need to do that. So you can see the dot 10 is the virtual IP for the primary and the dot 9 is the virtual IP for the secondary and we need to add that as well. I did not configure accounting and I think as a best practice it's good to have accounting enabled as well. And one other thing that I'd like to do is to enable IP client tracking. That's one of the commands below the videos of the previous video. Uh, we can get client visibility, IP visibility by enabling the client track IP command. And uh, we need to do three steps there. First is we need to enable client track IP on a global level. Then on each of our VLANs, we need to enable client tracking as well. And because we don't want to do tra client tracking on our uplink ports, we need to disable it then on the uplink port, which is the 111 port. So let's configure that. And then let's bounce the switch port to see if it works. And let's check once more. Oh, there we see, there is our IP address. And you, as you can see, it's in the VLAN 11, which is our employee VLAN. And that's the default VLAN that we configured for our client on the port. As mentioned before, we did not put any configuration or role-based access. So that is the next step. And the good thing is that we can take the same approach that we did for the wireless. So if we have a look in the policy, the enforcement policy for our wireless, you can see we have that and uh, basically we can create a copy of that and reuse that for the wired. So let's do that, create a copy, then let's edit it and let's change the name so it will reflect the AOS CX wired. You can see the default profile is still deny access. And then in the rules, there's one thing that I changed from before. So if you remember this rule, it was machine authenticated and not user authenticated. However, if you check, uh, it appears that with deep authentication, if you have just computer authentication, uh, you do have the user authenticated role for some reason. So I didn't expect that. Uh, but if we check it, so like in this client, let's uh, sign out. And then check the access tracker. You can see the user authenticated role is there as well. So checking if machine authenticated and not user authenticated, that doesn't work. What we can do is we can use the TEEP method to and then uh, check if there is a failure on there. And so I reflected that in this policy. So now it's using the tips role machine authenticated and the TEEP method to status is not a success. In that case, we return the machine role. Then now we have our enforcement policy. Let's go back in there and uh, let's apply that policy. And uh, as you can see, we didn't make any changes from the wireless. So the roles that we return to the wireless and to the wire, these are equal uh, with the new Aruba OS switches. By the way, if you have the old Aruba switches, uh, there it was slightly different, but with the AOS CX switches, it's the same attributes that we have for the role assignment for the wireless and for the wired. So let's sign in again and see what access tracker will show us. And what you can see in the access tracker is that we have now authenticated as the admin one. And we have the admin role assigned. If we now check on the switch in the CLI, we can see with the show port access client that we have a failure status. And that's of course that we don't have the role admin on the switch configured. So let's change that. So I prepared some commands here for local user roles. 
where I have a role and at this point I uh, just VLAN assignment and I will do the VLAN assignment based on the named VLAN. So if I check my configuration, you can see that I have the VLAN names here configured. So VLAN 10 is the management VLAN, VLAN 13 is the guest VLAN and uh, so on. And I'm uh, using in my policy the VLAN name, which allows me if I have different locations where the different VLANs might be reflected for guest and management and corporate, I can just use the same policy and then the switch configuration will make the translation from the VLAN name to the VLAN ID. I think that's a pretty good practice. So let's put in that configuration. So there we have our role admin, employee, help desk, contractor, BYD, machine. And then let's bounce the switch port, shut, no shut. And what we can see is that we have the uh, authentication now correctly. And uh, on port 113, I don't see the IP address correctly, but that is uh, because the client didn't uh, do a DHCP again. And we can see that we have the access VLAN name, which is now the management VLAN. So if the client would do a new DHCP, it would get an IP address in the VLAN management or in VLAN 10. And if we now check in the access tracker, because we still see the anonymous as the username. So that's another thing that we can fix. We check the access tracker and I see an attribute here with the username, which is the radius ITF username i think that's a good one uh, what we can do is return that to the switch in the enforcement and in order to do that we first need to create a new enforcement profile return username and we change the attribute so it will not be the aruba but it will be radius itf and there it will be username and then it will be percent curly brace open and then what we copied from the access tracker curly brace close so during the enforcement that will be replaced and the username attribute will be sent back with the inner username. And that's needed of course because the switch only sees the tunneled deep traffic and it doesn't see any usernames in there and uh, ClearPass can return the actual username. And now we can add this enforcement profile to each of our uh, roles in the policy. So we'll do the machine one later on. So let's try to re-authenticate. And in the access tracker now we can see that we have the admin role as well as the username. And now if we go into our switch, what we can see is that we do see the username instead of the anonymous. Um, as well at this point we see the IP address in the management VLAN. Because we had a new DHCP from the client. So let's do the similar for the computer authentication uh, yeah, before we used the update of the endpoint based on the certificate. We can reuse that information and then we do a copy of the return username and we change that to the return computer name. And now let's change that in the enforcement policy. Let's go in into our rules, edit that one. And we can return the computer name as well. Save. And on the client, let's switch off to get a computer authentication. And first in access tracker, we can see that we have the host name of the authentication and we have the computer name returned and now let's check on the switch. We can now see that we have the computer name here on the switch as well for a signed off computer and we are in the employee VLAN, VLAN 11, uh, which also is what we expected. Also now let's check in our accounting, in the access tracker we can also see that in the accounting now because we have the client visibility we can see the framed IP address. So we can see accounting is working and we can see the client IP tracking is working as well. And now let's try what happens if we sign in as a contractor, because then we should get another role and another uh, VLAN. And we can indeed see that we are in the VLAN uh, 13. And on the bottom of the page, you can see the role is contractor. So uh, we are in the guest VLAN. 
So it is pretty basic what we did, but uh, we do have all the rolls that we have on the wireless. We have them on the wired now as well. However, just with a VLAN assignment. I decided to leave it like this uh, for now because there is an excellent series on the channel called Dynamic Segmentation Inside Out. There's a series for the old Aruba OS switches and there is a series for the AOS CX switches as well. And that will cover everything from uh, the access lists for local user roles, uh, all kinds of other attributes. It covers downloadable user roles, so the role contents will be downloaded from the ClearPath server. As well, it has everything about user-based tunneling, where we have a role on the switch, which will then build a tunnel to an Aruba gateway or controller, and then have central management and central control of the client traffic. Uh, which is pretty awesome functionality, uh, however, I think it's uh, too much to cover it in this series. So uh, please refer to the Dynamic Segmentation Inside Out series by Dick van Oeveren on this channel. So that's it. In the next video we probably will start doing profiling, so client profiling, uh, which will be the step up to Mac authentication. So in a few videos we probably have .1x authentication, Mac authentication on the same port. So clients that can do .1x authentication will do .1x authentication. Other clients will be profiled and have access to the network as well. I hope you like this video. If so, please Comment, like, subscribe, all the good things as well. Make sure that you reach out to the Airheads community, community.arubanetworks.com.